Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to show you how you can create an intersection and have it highlighted like this on the screen. So if I basically select a month from in here, this moves, it highlights the row and the column and the actual cell that this is referring to is highlighted in red. The number is 29 and the index function is bringing back 29. So if I change the exercise to something else, if I go back up, for example, it just shifts across and the intersection sits there. So 27 and the index match function is bringing back 27. So what I want to do is recreate this intersection in conditional formatting and then go through how I did the match function and the index function to get it to pull, that, pull this number off. You might not need to pull the number off, you might just need to look at it and then make a note but that's what I'm going to do. So on the next sheet, I've got the same table. If I just make this a bit bigger, so you can see it. And I've got the formulas that I'm going to use on the right there. Um, just come down a little bit so it's on the screen. So those are the formulas that I'm going to use in conditional formatting. Now we need to pay particular attention on the dollar signs, where they're sitting. So that one there, for example, is lock in column C, but not the row. Uh, that's obviously dollar signed. That one there is locking row two, but not the D, and that's dollar signed as well. And then these are different as well. So I'll, I'll do each one of these in turn, and you can see how it works. If I highlight the area that I want this to apply to, go to conditional formatting, manage rules. First one is going to be new rule. Now each one of these are formula options. So I'm going to the bottom one of these list at the top, and the first one I'll do is the top one where it's just got these two basically equaling either that cell there or that cell there. So basically, I start off with AND, open the bracket on the AND, and then I need to repeat this formula. So this one is saying C4, because that's what it is on the other sheet. So in this case, it is C3 equals C1. Now let's do the dollar signs. Well, I'll do, I'll do the... Um, dollar sign first off so the C needs to be locked but the 3 does not so I'll take that off C1 is OK comma and then if D2 equals D1 now again the dollar signs if you look at that D2 the 2 needs to be locked but not the D not column D and that is locked so that is the first thing now the AND function um, I'll close the bracket on that, will retur return true or false. So that has to be true or false. It can't be something else. It's true or false. If I go and do the format, I'll just set this to fill red, get this bit to work. OK to that. OK to that. So that one's worked. That cell's gone red. If I click OK to that and then just select something else. So it's basically these, if I change that, just check it works to weights that's gone across to weights if I change the month to a different month I'll go for a shorter month April say so that is working but now what I need to do is these two where I need the intersection so I want the row and the column to also change colour so if I highlight all of that go back into conditional formatting manage rules new rule so again, it's the formula option, so a formula option. So now I'm going to do this one. So basically, if, if D2 is equal to C, uh, sorry, is equal to D1. So if D2 is equal to D1, so that's D2. If that's equal to that, that's what I want to format first off. So let's just type that. So we go in and put equals in there. Actually, the computer does put equals in there, but if I put equals in there, it might not put any funny symbols in there so basically if D and now look at the dollar sign and the little example I've got there so the D does not need to be locked so this is a mixed reference dollar sign the two does equals to D1 now D1 is dollar signed that is dollar signed close the bracket so if D2 is equal to D1 format go for yeah an orange go for orange okay OK, just leave that one like that for a minute and then do the other one, new rule, 
formula option. So we go equals and open the bracket. So this is going to be if C3 is equal to C1 and then the dollar sign is the same. So C3, so we'll go dollar sign first off for the C and then 3 is equal to C1. I'll just click on that and it's got the dollar signs already and this also wants to be formatted orange. Click OK, click OK to that. OK, then apply and then we get that. Now that's gone over the top of the, the red cell so what I need to do is just move this to the top apply that so now that's working so I click OK so I change the month June shoots down to June change the exercise so the top there swimming moves across the swimming so that's exactly what I want now to pull that 22 off there for example over here what I need to do is use the index function. Now the index function needs a row and a column number. If I if I just um, this would be the data area. So for example, that is going to be one two three four five six and one two three four five six seven. So it's row six column seven. So if I just type it down, it index. That's the data area. It needs the data. And then comma six, comma seven. Let's see what that brings back. It brings back twenty-two. So that's what that, that's what that's doing. Now you can actually type that like that. Obviously, that's going to work. I've called this little area my data, but I want this to work when I select one of these automatically, automatically to put the the figures in place. So if I click onto this green cell, for example, and call that, um, let's call that row. We might not like row, but that's going to be the row number. Yeah, let me do row, that's okay. And this will be column. Call that column. Press and enter each time. Now, in, the, in these two cells, I need to do a match function, which is going to give me a number. So basically you're going to match what position at the moment June is in this list of months. Now, if I click on June, I've called that months. So basically, if I go equals match, open the bracket, click on that cell, click on that cell, comma. Now, this list I've called month, M-O-N, comma, a zero is an exact match and then close the bracket now I can't use the the word month and months because I've used them on the other sheet but you, you get the idea you will only have you better use the full word if you wanted to if I tick that that comes back with six for me now that's a row that I'm going to match function is gonna use column now this is this is this lot so if I highlight this list of activities they're called act and this is called nothing it's just called d1 so if i call this something so i call this um acts just with an s press enter on that so this one is going to be equals match acts what position is acts swimming in this case with act short for activity comma zero exact match close the bracket click the tick it's in seven so that gives you the six and seven that I typed in there look six and seven so the match function is now giving me the actual location of that so now the index function needs to look at that for its row and that for its column so I can now type equals index open the bracket and just use the the data so I need to highlight the data which I've called my data comma and then I've called these two the green cell and the red cell I've called them row comma column close the bracket click the tick and it comes back with a 22 so now when I change this automatically if I change that to September that's highlighting 31 the index and match functions are coming back with 31 
Now, I'm not going to put all these together, but these two functions can sit inside that function. So instead of saying row and column, it would just actually say the match function. Just a little bit tidy like that, but some people like to have it all in one. But the point of this is, whatever I select from these drop-down lists, not only does it now highlight what the figure is, 28, I'm getting that brought back here as well. So that's a combination of uh, several things, really. Conditional formatting to give me an intersection and conditional formatting to highlight the intersection row and column and then I've used the match function to get me the actual um, row and column number ready for the index function which brings back the actual number that's created or selected by my selection. So that's just a very short video of how you can use um, conditional formatting to create an uh, intersection and then use the match and index function to pull that information off. So hopefully this little video has been of use. You've got the references there, the video, the formulas to do this. Thanks for your time. I'll catch you on the next one.